Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. Well guys, over the past month, or maybe a little longer, I have been getting more and more questions around crafting. Stuff like how can I craft 600 gear? Why is my crafting capping at 580? I just maxed armoring, now what? For a long while I took a lot of this information as common knowledge, so I haven't talked about it much. But it would seem, with all the new players since Brimstone and the free weekends, it might be time to have a closer look once again. So in this video, I will attempt to cover everything you will need to know to craft the best gear you can in any crafting skill. So let's get into it. In this video, we won't be covering how to max level any crafting ability. If you need to know that, I have guides for every trade skill already available. But what we will be looking at here is when you hit 200 and you excitedly set out to craft some 600 gear score gear. There will be, however, some important things you will need to know first, as well as a few steps you will need to take in order to become a true master crafter. And that's the information I hope to clarify here. We will begin by looking at the types of things you will be wanting to craft. In New World, there are basically four different categories that you can break down the items you will be crafting into. First, you have named items. Some of them you will be given the recipes for simply by the merit of leveling your skill, and others will be learned using schematics you will find in supply crates throughout the game. These items will always require the same materials, and will always roll the exact same. Same perks, attributes, and item level, regardless of the trophies and gear and stuff you use to craft them. They are just a static craft. Next, you will have patterns. These are awarded from events, special drops from PvE arenas, and can even be found, rarely, in aptitude crates. These are a bit different from the previous category because they have very different roles depending upon the pattern in question. However, the one thing that is important here is you can only craft these once, and then the pattern is consumed. So if you are wanting to craft multiples of these, for whatever reason, you will require multiple patterns. These patterns come in two very, very different varieties. First, there are the guaranteed 600 gear score patterns, which of course will roll legendary 600 regardless of your armor, trophies, or whatever you use. You will receive these from events, of course, and there are three sets of these that you can farm from the various PvE arenas, and they can also be contained within aptitude crates. A side note here, this will be the only way you can reliably craft a legendary shield is from the aptitude crate recipe. And the other variety will be a little different and will operate like a regular craft and will depend on the trophies and such you are using. These patterns may seem exactly the same as a regular craft, but not exactly. These can offer you bonuses like the ability to choose attributes, cool and unique skins, modified perk buckets, the benefits are unique to the patterns themselves, but these do require significant investment to really get the full potential out of. The next type of items that you can craft will be the artifact items. The way these work is quite simple. You will require a certain artifact item in your bag or shed in order to even see the recipe. But once you have it, then you can gather the required materials and craft it. However, keep in mind once again that once crafted, the artifact item is then consumed, and the recipe will disappear until you have once again collected that artifact. This applies to every single artifact crafting type, the weapons, armors, and the basic and major trophies in both tiers that require an artifact to be seen in the crafting menu. And the final category will be the crafts that will require you to invest different items that will impact the values, the regular crafts like the tier weapons and armor. This will be where you will craft the best gear in the game, but in order to do so you will need to invest in your character quite heavily to see any success really. The first thing you will notice is that the quality of the materials that you choose to use to craft will impact the overall outcome of the gear score of the item. So in order to even have the potential to craft 600 gear score items, you will need to use cooldown materials in each slot available in the crafting window. Asmodium, runic leather and phoenix weave and glittering ebony. These sorts of materials. If you even substitute one of them with a regular or rare tier 5 material, your outcome can never reach 600 gear score. However, one thing you will quickly notice as a new crafter is that this alone is not enough. Even with all of the materials, your crafting potential will not be 600 gear score. This will only make crafting 545 to 575 gear score possible. So, as you may have guessed, you will need much more than just the skill and the materials to be an effective crafter. Now, as a side note, you will notice mine says 550 to 575, and this is because of another buff you will want to have, the Armorer's Inspiration, or whatever it is for your chosen craft. This is a town buff that is activated by the town owning company. You will receive this buff if you own a house in the town in which it is activated, no matter if you are a member of the owner's faction or not. So keep this in mind moving forward. So first, you will require the crafting armor set associated with the crafting ability you are attempting to craft within. So in this case, of course, armoring. But there is a set for each skill. You can find a link in the description to a complete guide on these armor sets, where to farm them, and what they are. Anyway, these armor pieces will provide you with a plus two per piece worn to the crafting potential gear score of the items crafted while wearing it. This is a plus two to the base and the ceiling. 
and this is an important distinction. So as you can see now, we have plus 10 to the base and the ceiling of the potential item, making it now a 555 to 585 craft potential. Better, but still not 600 that we are after. So next, what you will want is the crafting food for the appropriate crafting skill. For this example, it will be cabbage soup because I am armoring. But each crafting skill has a tier 5 food item that adds plus 15 to the crafting skill. So now that we have consumed the food, as you can see, we now can craft 600 gear score gear. So this is a great start. In order to hit the potential to craft 600 gear score gear, you will require your armor set, the cooldown materials, and the crafting food. But this is only the first steps. Because as you can see, this is 570 to 600. So your odds of rolling 600 will still be very low. And with the extreme cost in the materials, you will want to do a lot more work to improve these odds. So the next thing we want to do is increase our floor because our ceiling is already maxed. So your first step will be the easiest, and that will be the earring. This is a plus five to crafting skill base rolls, and one of these exists for every crafting skill. So this will now up you to 575 to 600. So the final thing you will now require to finish this off is the trophies. And again, there are trophies for each crafting skill, with the exception of furnishing, and in a way jewel crafting. For jewel crafting, you will require the armor trophy as well. Now, the reason I wanted to break it down like this is simple. People have developed this idea that crafting 600 gear score is impossible without trophies, and trophies are a huge investment. But as you can see here, it is not. The role trophies play is to work as a way of increasing your chances at 600 gear score by narrowing the role by increasing the floor. So as you can see, the major trophies will finally achieve the desired 595 to 600 roll. But if you had the basic or minor trophies, you would still have the 600 cap. You would simply have a lower base. So with three basic trophies, for example, you would still have a 592 to 600 instead of a 595 to 600. So you can still craft with reliably similar results without having to invest in major trophies right off the bat. So just quickly to recap, in order to maximize your crafting potential, you will need the following things. Your trade skill to 200, five pieces of trade skill gear, an earring with the trade skill mastery perk for your chosen trade skill, three trophies, basic, major, or minor, tier five trade skill food, and a house in a settlement with a trade skill buff active. Now that we have covered what you will need and why, let's look at a few other things that have been added to the game to further your crafting potential. First, Azoth. When you use this in crafting, it basically guarantees the item will roll the max possible attributes, perks, and gem slots onto the item when you hit a certain gear score threshold. You will always want to use this in your crafts because nothing feels quite as bad as rolling an item and getting 600 gear score, but having it roll green or blue 600 gear score. What investing Azoth does is ensure that if the item rolls 600 gear score, it will be legendary. Next up, we have the perk option window. This is an important part of crafting. What this does is allow you while crafting to lock a perk using a perk item you will have in your inventory or shed. When you lock this in, it will guarantee that this chosen perk will be rolled onto the crafted item. This lock can also be used as a way to ensure a certain attribute. Certain attributes will be on the item instead of locking in a perk. This of course brings us to an item that was added a few months after release, because people wanted the ability to lock a perk and an attribute roll, and that is the Timeless Shard of course. You will receive Timeless Shards upon completing any expedition, as well as inside the aptitude crates associated with each crafting skill, and of course you can purchase them from the market if you needed them. When you use these, you will be able to choose your perk and using 10 of the attribute items associated with the attribute of your choice then be able to craft an item knowing what attribute and what perk you have locked in. Now these items will still of course have to obey the regular crafting rules meaning you will still require everything we discussed earlier to roll 595 to 600 and you will still need to use all of the top tier cooldown materials and even though you have invested heavily you still may roll an epic 595 item. So keep this in mind nothing ensures 600. Another item you can use while crafting is of course the stopwatch. This was again an item added much later after launch, and what it does is increase your base roll while crafting. So instead of 595 to 600, you're now looking at 598 to 600. This item is crafted at the stone cutting table and it is not cheap, at least not for a newer player. This will cost you 500 Azoth, 500 Umbral Shards, and 10 Runestones, and on top of that you can only craft it once per day. Now, to a new player, this may seem great, 598 to 600 roll, but it really isn't, and I will explain why. So as you can see, in order to even do this, you will require 3 infused fragments, plus the stopwatch, making this already a very expensive craft, but then you will also require all the normal tier 5 cooldown materials, and okay, well that's fine. And you can only select either one perk or one attribute, not both like with the timeless shards. And you will still need to invest further Azoth beyond the cost of the stopwatch itself, 
to ensure if you roll a 600, you get all of the potential perks. So with all that said, you could still roll something completely useless, and the roll was quite costly. A far cheaper option to this will be the Tempest replicas for somebody at this stage. These replicas, unlike the rest, already give you a bonus to your base roll of 597 to 600. So instead of going through, all the other trouble getting 10 desecrated flesh will be much much cheaper and easier, for basically the exact same type of roll. This was just something I wanted you to keep in mind. Now, if you are looking to invest heavily because you are after a very specific and potentially best in slot item, what you are going to be wanting to use are the new Golden Scarabs. These of course you will get from doing acid chests and glyph chests in Brimstone Sands, so I am sure you have gotten at least one by now. So what these are is basically a way to turn Timeless Shards into Super Timeless Shards. So, these work exactly the same way as Timeless Shards, except now you will require 25 of the Attribute item instead of 10, and 3 Timeless Shards instead of 1, but will now give you the ability to choose the desired attribute, as well as 2 of the desired perks. This then is a huge way to reduce your odds of getting undesirable rolls, and further zero in on that perfect item you are wanting to create. This is of course risky and you will still have a big chance of rolling epics with two perks you chose, so this is an activity for the true endgame, when you have the coin to burn. Because rolling armor in this way to create best in slot gear is quite unforgiving, and anyone who has done this will tell you. You can easily burn 500k coin and still not get the right legendary best in slot piece, so don't be fooled into thinking this will make it easy for the investment. A few other side items I would also like to mention before I end this video because of many questions I have received are. Yes, if you have a home in the town where the armor or whatever buff is active you are wanting for crafting, you can craft anywhere. It is a global buff. If your home is in that town, you can craft in any town and you will still have the buff. When crafting, the stations will only pull materials from the shed in the town the station is in. So if you are wanting to craft but your materials are scattered in many different towns, go to your shed and move them to your inventory or to the shed where you are currently located. The stations cannot see the materials in other settlements. When attempting to craft best in slot gear, the way that you choose which perks to lock in and which to roll will be best done by looking at two factors. First, what is the percent chance the perks you're after have of rolling on a piece of gear you're crafting? For example, one of the perks is 15% chance and the other two are 1.2% chance. Clearly you will want to lock in the lower ones. But another thing you must consider are the perk buckets and how many potential perks they contain within them. So for example, if you are wanting to roll a piece of armor for PvP, you will want resilience of course, then shirking fortification and let's say a weapon skill perk. You might then be tempted to lock in resilience because of course you will want that, but no I wouldn't recommend that and here's why. Resilience is contained in a perk pool called crit defense, and this perk pool only contains one perk, this one. So if it rolls this bucket, that's the only thing that you can possibly get. Where shirking fortifications bucket contains 8 possible perks, and the weapon perk bucket contains 78 or 79, I can't remember, potential perks. Around there anyway. You would be smart then to lock in the shirking fortification and the weapon perk. Does that make sense? If you're wondering for the things that you're crafting, what perk buckets you're dealing with, you can go to the New World database and check the item you're crafting and see the potential perk buckets, and the percentages associated with each perk there, and make better decisions before crafting. And finally, if you are a newer crafter and a fresh 60 attempting to gear, a great first step can be farming the patterns from the PvE arenas. What makes these especially amazing, even better in some ways than the event patterns, is that they always roll 600 gear score, and they do not require cooldown materials at all. You can craft these with any old tier garbage materials. You are not required to invest any Azoth as they always guarantee all perks, and you can still select a perk you desire. Where you may experience some issues is that the attributes on these items will always roll random unless you lock in an attribute in exchange for making the perks roll 100% random. But in the end, you get a bound piece of 600 gear score gear, it will give you an expertise bump much like any crafted 600 item will, and it won't squish because you crafted it. So this can be a great way for newer crafters to roll armor for themselves if they tend to run PvP arenas regularly. Okay guys, I do hope this has answered all of or at least some of the questions I have been getting around crafting lately. If your question is not answered, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And if I missed anything because I did edit this a lot to make it of reasonable length because crafting is such a big topic, please feel free to mention that in the comments to help those people who may still have some questions. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.